Sometimes finding an efficient solution requires you to work your way backwards. And this problem is a perfect example. Let's see what we can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we will start off with the brute force methods and then we are going to first look at the solution and then work our way towards the top to find an efficient method. After that, as usual, we will also do a draw run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. The problem statement is actually very, very specific. You are given the head of a linked list which has n elements. So let us say my linked list is represented like this. Each of these indexes are representing a element in the linked list. Now you have to reorder it in a very certain way. What actually happens is after you reorder, the first element should be the first element of the linked list and then the second element should be the last element of the linked list. Going forward, the third element should be the second element of the linked list and the fourth element should be the second last element of the linked list. So basically you are picking one element from the first and then one element from the last then the second element from the first and then the second last element from the last. Correct? And you have to go on doing like this. To understand it even better, let us look at some of the sample test cases. Over here, I have my first test case, right? And I have these four elements. So how should they reorder? To understand it better, let me quickly just relabel all of these elements. Now, for this particular test case, this resultant list is your answer. If you check out what just happened, if you see, I have the first element over here, then I have the last element over here, then I have the second element over here, and then I have the second last element. So basically, I am trying to maintain this certain ordering. This was the case when you had an even number of elements. This is your expected answer. In the second test case, I have an odd number of elements. So nothing to worry about. You just have to follow this particular principle to arrive at your answer. Once again, what we are going to do is we are going to label all of our elements. And now for this particular list, your reordered list will look something like this. If you notice, once again, we do the same thing. First, I have the first element from the beginning. Then I have the first element from the very last. Then again, I pick up the second element and then I pick up the second last element. And then I am left with just one more element. So I will place it over here. I have no more elements. So that is where I stop. So this is how your reordering is taking place. And since this is a linked list, you are expected that you just change the pointers. It means that you cannot change the value of any of these nodes. You cannot just say that, okay, I will remove eight from over here and I will write a 16 in this node. No, you have to actually move all of these nodes at their new places. And that is how you have to perform the reordering. Now, if you feel that you have understood the problem statement even better, feel free to first try it out. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. To start things off, I will first try to approach this problem in a brute force method. And how do you do it? Let us say I have this sample linked list available, correct? And you have to reorder it. The first idea that can come to my mind is, okay, I have to pick the first element and then the last, then the second element and then the second from the last. So what if I store all of these elements somewhere I can access them quickly? So for example, if I have a linked list that has n elements, I can then have a new array that has a size of n and I can just copy all of the elements, correct? So now I have all of these elements in my array. With an array, you have a very good flexibility that you can just use the array indexes to refer each of the element. So once you have an array set up, what you can simply do is you can have two pointers like this. And then to arrive at your answer, you will start taking up elements one by one. So first of all, you take the first element, 
and then you can move this pointer one step ahead. What you can then do is you can take the last element and then you can move your pointer one step backward. So this is how you can proceed ahead. You will now pick up 42 and then you will pick up 16. These pointers will keep on moving until they meet. So once you are finished iterating, yes, you will have your correct reordered list. But with this solution, you never took any advantage of the fact that this is a linked list and you did not actually change any of these pointers. Instead, you were either creating a new list or you were changing the elements over here. Also, you took an extra space to consume this array. Think about it. If you have 10,000 element long linked list, then you will need additional 10,000 space to perform this type of a solution, correct? Hence, this is not desired. And there can be multiple other brute force methods as well, but all of them will end up taking some more extra space or they may not take advantage of the linked list structure. So definitely we need to do something about it. To start finding an efficient solution, let us take up the example linked list once again. And for a moment, just forget about all of these elements. Take a step back and think about the problem statement itself. If you tried to make the problem generic, you were given a linked list something like this, correct? And what was your expected output? Your expected output or reordered list should look something like this. And if you remember, I told that in this problem, it is better if you start to work your way backwards. Now, just take a brief moment and analyze this particular resultant list. What is happening over here? In this list, you have two different components. So I have my elements L0, L1, L2, L3 and so on. This is one part, right? So I need to have one component just like this, right? And if you notice, I have all of the remaining elements as well. And how do the remaining elements look like? They are Ln, they are Ln minus 1, they are Ln minus 2. Correct? So, what are the two components? The first component was L0, L1, L2 and the second component is Ln, Ln minus 1, Ln minus 2. Right? Basically, what I am saying is the last element, the second last element, the third last element. Correct? Also, since these elements are alternating, correct? You can easily say that this will go all the way up to Ln by 2 and this is also going to go all the way up to Ln by 2. So basically, these two lists will be half of the original list, correct? Now, what advantage does these two lists give me? If you notice once again, let us say I have two pointers over here. I have one pointer that is at L0 and I have one pointer that is at Ln. To have my reordered list, what I can do is, I can take one element from over here, so I get L0 and then I move my pointer one step ahead. And for the next element, I will take an element from over here and then put Ln over here. And once again, I move my pointer one step ahead. To keep moving, I will now take L1, move my pointer one step ahead and then I will take Ln minus 1 and then move my pointer one step ahead. So you see, if I keep on continuing this process, what do I get? I will have my resultant list, correct? And this list is actually the reordered list that I want. So I can conclusively say that if I am able to divide my original list into these two components, that is the first half of the linked list and the second half that is reversed. And then I can just simply merge them, then I will have my answer, right? So in a nutshell, what I can do is, I can divide my problem into three basic steps. The first step will be to find the midpoint. Once you know that, okay, this is the midpoint of my linked list, I can now divide my linked list into two different portions, right? The second step will be that I reverse the second half. So I found my half over here, right? In the next step, what I can do is, I can simply reverse this particular half of the linked list. So 
23 will come over here, then 16, then a 15 and then a 8. And once you're done with all of this, the third remaining part is to join them again. And to do that, you will have one pointer at head and one pointer at 23. Now, just keep on taking one element at a time and move your pointers ahead. So you will get 9 and then you will get a 23. Then you will get a 42 and then you will get a 16. So this is the basic idea and it feels like we may able to work it out. We are not taking any extra space and we just have to do one iteration of the entire linked list. Correct? So let us try to apply this concept and see how it can work out. So once again, I have my sample link list over here and this time we are going to work with the actual values. So what was our three step process again? Find the midpoint, reverse the second half and then join them again. So finding the midpoint of a link list is very, very easy. Correct? What you can do is you can apply the hare and tortoise algorithm or the Floyd Warshall algorithm and then find out that yes, this is the midpoint. Once you have found out this midpoint, the next part is to reverse the second half. And reversing a linked list also can be done in a single iteration. If you're new to reversing a linked list, check out my video first. I am adding a link in the description below. So once you have the location of this particular node, you can reverse this half of the linked list. Once you perform these two steps, my linked list starts to look something like this. If you notice, I have my first half of the linked list that is intact and this second half of the linked list, it has been reversed. So 23 is now at the beginning and then you have 16, 15 and 8. So this part of the list has now been reversed. The last part is very, very simple. You just need to join them again. So now I will take two pointers. The first pointer points at 9 and the second pointer will point at the midpoint. And once you are over here, this step is very, very easy. Just take one value from the first pointer and take the second value from the next pointer. Now move both of your pointers one step ahead. Again, take a value from the first pointer and take a value from the second pointer. Move these pointers one step ahead. Take a value from the first pointer and take a value from the second pointer. For the last part, you see that your first pointer has reached the midpoint, so don't do anything about it. Copy the remaining value of your second pointer and then you get an 8. And voila, you have arrived at your reordered list. So we did not take any extra space and we were just able to perform this entire reordering in just two iterations of the entire list. Let us now quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you will have the complete code to implement this solution. And on the right, once again, I have my sample link list that is passed in as an input parameter to the function reorder list. Now, beginning off with the dry run, the first thing that we do is we add a base case that if the head is null or if there is just a single element in the link list, you simply return it. You cannot reorder it, correct? The next part is to find the middle of the link list. And to do that, we apply the hare and tortoise algorithm or the Floyd and Warshall technique. What it will do is it will maintain two pointers P1 and P2 and one of them advances at a regular speed while the other advances at a double speed. So this will help you to find that, okay, this is the midpoint of my linked list. After P2 reaches the end, P1, this will be pointing at the middle point, correct? So now after this loop, I know that P1 is pointing at my middle point of the linked list. If you recollect, what was the second step? The second step was reversing the second half of the linked list. And this particular piece of code is exactly the same as reversing a single linked list. So once you execute this, your linked list starts to look something like this. Your first part remains intact and this second part gets reversed. So now we are done with two portions. The last part is now very, very simple. You have to perform the actual reordering. So to do that, you will have two pointers, right? P1 will point at the head 
and then P2 will point at the middle of the linked list. To do your actual reordering, you pick up each of these elements and then assign the pointers. And that is fairly easy because you have the location of both of these elements. Try going through this code on your own and I am fairly certain that it will all make sense to you. Once again, we did not take any extra space, so the space complexity of this solution is order of 1 and we just did a couple of iterations, so the time complexity of this solution remains order of n. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As you might have already figured out from the solution, sometimes if you just look at the resultant output, it can give you ideas how you can actually proceed ahead. Think about it. If you just look at those sample test cases, then it is hard to decipher, okay, what do I even need to do? But once you looked at the formula and rather the expression and you broke it down into several pieces, the problem became so simple, right? And then you can figure out, okay, if I proceed this way, then I will land at a very efficient solution. So tell me what do you think about it? And if you have any other problems while going through the video, tell me those also. I would be happy to discuss all of it. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I simplify programming for you. Also, a huge shout out to all the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get priority reply to your comments as well. Stay tuned for my next videos. Until then, see ya.